uh, to check balance inside. Okay. Uh, so every time the diaphragm pulls out, so it first sucks back, it pulls the liquid up through the, the suction check valves, right? Then when the diaphragm is going to push out, the bottom of the suction check valves seat, so it can't go back that way, and it pushes up this way. Uh, come up through here. This is an injection valve for a spring-loaded check valve. Same difference, okay? Um, each pump has one, and the reason that they're here instead of a ball valve is because I, you, well, a lot of people would put ball valves here because if I want to take a pump out, I need to isolate them, isolate it here, and take the pump out. Okay, but I can't put a ball valve here because I can't have a ball valve before a pressure relief valve. Because if I close this valve and this pump keeps going, it's just going to keep building pressure, building pressure, building pressure until something gives. And to an extent, this pump could do probably 350, 400 PSI if it wanted to. This is a positive displacement. So it's just going to keep building pressure, building pressure, building pressure. So that's why there's a check valve here. Because if I need to take a pump out, I can just undo the tubing here, and liquid won't go back out this way, so you can pump it. Now, everybody we know, check valves aren't perfect. They drift. Okay? So, if you need to take one of these pumps out of service, you're going to undo the tubing right here, and you're going to grab this little piece. And it's plugged. So it's just going to thread on to there. Just to like you know seal it up so that it doesn't drip when you're when you're having to take one of them out for service. So this guy always stays right here. Nobody ever knows what that is, even with the sign there. So. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to come in here. This is a drain. So if I need to depressurize the system, I'm just going to open up this valve and it's going to depressurize everything. So in general, this guy's always going to stay closed during operation. My other way, of, uh, in general, most of the time, you're going to be going up. And this is a back pressure valve. So it's a diaphragm with a spring on it, and I can compress the spring to make it harder and harder for it to push through. So if I, and we'll, we'll adjust this in a little bit. Um, so what metering pumps like? Do they like that pressure on them? They're like pressure, I guess, it makes all those seat, those uh, check valves seat better. So, uh, depending on your system, um, you know, if we had zero pressure on this side, I'd like to see this, you know, somewhere around 40 psi. Because I think your water is at about 100? Yeah, about 90. About 90? We're going to set it slightly more than that. We're going to set it at about maybe like 100. So that the pressure here stays constant. Even if yours fluctuates a little bit, this, these pumps will always see the same pressure. And that makes them consistent. We come up, um, <laughs> this guy's always going to stay closed. It's for calibrating the pumps. So if I wanted to calibrate pumps, we're going to do it. I'm going to open up this valve, close this one, and I'm going to basically fill this up and then record it. This is just a drain for it. And this is a bit line because if I start filling this, I don't want to pressurize it. So all the pressure is going to come out here and just drip back to your chin. Um, but most of the time, the pump is going to come out here, um, go down your tubing, and you have your injection valve. This is an injection lance, right? So actually, this tube goes all the way down and should be sitting somewhere in the middle. Uh, so then you're going right in the middle of the flow. That way, um, one, you won't get like a, this won't all plug up with hardness. You might get a little tip. I get a little bit of hardness because as soon as bleach hits water, hardness comes out a little bit. So, like, if you think, like, I don't know, you guys have, have hardness here? Yeah. 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 So, like, you imagine, like, cleaning your, your shower heads or whatever. Well, this is probably going to happen, like, a thousand times faster. Because you're oxidizing that water, so it's immediately coming out. So, at, at very minimum, I would probably pull this once a year and just check that tip. And just make sure that it's not clogged up. And there's a little rubber tip, so called a duck bill check. If you've seen a duck bill check, it's basically like a piece of tube that just holds flat. When you put pressure on this side of it, it'll open. When you put pressure on this side of it, it'll close. So, 
Uh, you're just looking at my tip and just making sure. I mean, what I would like to do is I, you know, stop my pumps. Uh, probably depressurize the system right here because that's going to depressurize from here all the way back and out into here. Um, and you should be able to pull this out hot. So you, don't even, you shouldn't need to take the pressure out of here. Now that said, you have 100 PSI pushing this guy out, right? So this chain on this side is pretty tight because that's what's actually holding it in. This compression nut here is what's sealing it. The compression nut does not hold it in, okay? So this should only be hand tight. It's only hand tight enough that it's not going to be water. It's not going to be leaking leach here, it's only going to be leaking water. Because this tube goes all the way down, so you have water on the outside of it, all the way through here. So if I actually loosen this, I should get a little bit of juice of water out of it. But what you want to do is you want to loosen it a little bit, enough that I can push this down. So I can push it down and take the pressure off this chain. Right? And then push it down, unlock this one. This chain should be the right length. And you can slowly let it up. But you gotta remember it's 100 PSI on it, right? If you let go, it's gonna hit the ceiling. So, um, I mean, we could do it. If you wanna do it, let's do it. So I'm gonna stop my pump, right? I'm gonna bleed my pressure just because I don't wanna deal with the chlorine. You should either see it come up here or down here. I only just crack it. I don't just like slam it open. Otherwise, well, you run the chance of spraying everywhere. It's probably not going to happen. So I know that from here all the way back to here is an atmospheric pressure. So not that there should be any leakage. So I'm just going to do this guy a little bit. So I can. Yeah, okay. All right, but I'm holding it, and I'm going to slowly let it up. I have to stop the chain. Usually, I check. Once this is out far enough, it should be this chain. Then there's still a little bit of residual pressure in here, so don't just pull this out really fast or else the water will just squirt over it. There probably will be a little bit of chlorine in it. Get my bucket over there. Yeah. Right, you can leave this up with me. Yeah. I'm just going to. Is that a block nut right here? And if we're smart, that's your nut feel. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is there's a very small slim line right in it. You just started checking for white crystallization around it. And it's going to be a little bit of leach on it. You're just looking for crystallization. And if you do find it, I mean, can't say that it wouldn't be a bad idea to have it. You can get basically just this piece as a set as a backup, and then you can soak this guy in like CLR or something like that. The other thing I can do to make sure it's not plugged. I can turn my phone. Actually, I can speed up a little bit so that doesn't. Oh, I need pressure the whole system. So if I turn my pump on and just make sure that it's dripping out the end, right? Turn my pump. 
Then I put it back in the reverse direction. Is that have to be facing any particular direction? Nope. No. Just put it in. Just put it in, and I mean this will spin on it, so I just like that chain straight up. Could it be twisted? It'll probably twist with the chain. Well, yeah, maybe a little bit. But I mean, I didn't even really need to do it so much as it felt like it was easy. So I would just keep an eye on it and just make sure that there's not like a little bit of a leak of water. And if there is, you know, a little twist. I mean, it's purely hand tight. Yeah. The chain is what's holding it in. Because a lot of guys make the, the you compress this and then you'll crack this when you got a problem. So I can hear it a little bit. So that's what I got. Uh, and then we should probably start our puck again. We're gonna build up the pressure, so we're gonna have to fill this line up to let it run a bit. Um, well I've got this open. These two lines are level switches. So each pump. Has a has a level switch. And you see, it's got a ceramic weight, and there's a little float on it. So if it gets down, this is wrong, it shuts off. So that float will drop, and halfway through, you'll get flashing yellow on the screen. So, uh, which pump are we running? We're on pump two. And we'll find out very quickly, won't we? So if I pull it up. There we go. So flashing yellow, it'll still run, but you know that there's an issue. Get a bit and you're getting low. And then at a certain level, it'll turn red and you'll get an alarm. And you should get this alarm out saying, hey, I got a problem with the chlorine pump. And it'll even, should even say, this is the indication for the level. So on yellow, actually, it should be a little uh, small um, one on the side. Yeah, so a little exclamation mark on the same, same, same little. Uh, And really, I, I mean, I would probably set these somewhere around. I mean, you don't want them below your foot valves. Yeah. I mean, it's whenever you think that you need to fill it up, right? Or a little bit below that. But, I mean, nobody really fills the tank completely full. You know, usually, you know, you're going to fill it well, not, probably somewhere in this vicinity. Depends, I mean, how much you use, right? You'll find out. You can set those just by pulling them up and putting them down. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's going to take a while to pressure right <coughs> at the rate we're going. So, I'm just going to turn this up. So, we're in manual mode at the moment. Usually, you'd be in analog, but they got issues with their analog signal, so we'll do that at the very end. But right now, we're in manual mode. It says manual on the top. And this is sort of the mode that you're going to use if. You need to like reprime the system really quick, you know, and you want to be able to speed up the pump, you know, without having to walk over there. You can put it in manual mode, and I can just speed up the pump with the up and down arrow. So right now it says 10 strokes a minute. I'm just going to speed it up just because I want to build this pressure up a little bit quicker. You can go all the way to 200, I'm just going to go to 100 because there's a, they can do a lot of leech. Yeah. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this the level to come up here. So you're always going to have an air bubble right here, okay. but you can't get an airlock on the discharge side of a pump. Okay, so we're pounding in the chlorine now. There. Uh, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm actually going to go this way. For the time being. I want to run it a little bit quicker because it's easier to set these when it's running a little bit quicker. So I'm going to set the back pressure valve. 
right now, it's set at 70, because this is the only thing stopping it from going into here. So it's going like this, and then down. And you shouldn't really have to set these very often, set it and forget it, kind of thing. So if I take my screwdriver, thread it in a little bit, it goes up. If I thread it out, it'll go down. So get a big screwdriver. So you said that our pressure's at about 90? So I'm going to set it about 100, just a little bit above it, so that the pumps see that pressure. And I know, I know for a fact that when we slow down the pump, it's actually going to drop a little bit. That's okay. So that's this guy set. Now I also have a pressure relief. It's actually the exact same valve. It's just because it's teed off. So if I close this valve. But I can't go anywhere, right? So the only option is to either build lots of pressure or maintenance on the system is the diaphragm in here and the diaphragm in here. Because what happens is you're supposed to have perfect liquid going through here, but we all know that little bits and pieces get pulled through and they start pitting the diaphragm. So when I stop the pump, what should happen is the gauge should drop, uh, call it about 20%, and it should hold. But it should hold. And that means that this guy's holding. If it drops straight up to zero, it means that there's little pitting or something going on inside here, and it's not holding the pressure. Now, it's not going to stop you from dosing, but what's going to happen is, is the next time you start up, you're going to have to build up all that pressure again in order to start dosing again. So what we want to do is we want to maintain the pressure so that the next time you start up, it starts dosing right away. So, you know, it's not absolutely critical that you change it, but it's sort of a, uh, you know, uh, if you see that happening, you should change it sooner than later. Yeah. Just the rubber that you have to change the most, or so or else? what you're going to, what you have, a, you actually have a spare parts kit and it actually comes with a couple of pieces, but really it's the only the diaphragm, nothing else. Unless you see it coming out here, that means you basically rupture the diaphragm, which is very, very rare. Um, you're probably only going to change the diaphragm. So all it is is it and I'll show it to you. So, what you're going to do, you know, depressurize the system, take this piece out, back this off, right out, so that there's no pressure on the spring, and then this unthreads from here. Once you take a diaphragm out, you shouldn't put that same one back in because it'll pinch lines in it. You know, if you do it, there's a good chance it'll leak. It'll probably leak, you know, probably out the side here. So, um, if you're going to take it apart, have another diaphragm with you. You know, if you have to, sure, you can put it back in and squeeze it in tight, but, you know, be ready for, you know, a small leak if that happens for the time being. Both valves are identical. Um, this valve actually can't thread into this one, and if you did, it would be backwards. So, <laughs> if you took this one out and put it here, the arrow would be pointing in the wrong direction. I actually kind of wish they didn't do that so that you could actually interchange them. Uh, so, so that's, you know, there's, there's O-rings in all these ball valves, and there's O-rings in here. Um, you don't have spare check valves with the spare part. Uh, no, you don't have spare parts. There's an O-ring right here that might have a ability. But remember that this whole system is sealed by O-rings. There's actually not a single thread that you're sealing on. So even though it looks like there's a thread here, there's actually an O-ring underneath it, right? Same with, you know, this is, this is a union, but there's an O-ring underneath it. So everything should only have to be kind of tight. Shouldn't, if you're gonna be taking a pair of pliers and cranking it down, there's another problem. Yeah, you know, you should be replacing the O-rings. Um, I know, well, you shouldn't have the issue, but I know that this guy is the weak point, the, the, the isolator. It's rated to 150. If you use it at around 150, I've seen them leave. But uh, because because chlorine heats metal, you have to have something in between it. So there's a diaphragm right here, and then uh, depending on what they fill it with, like a glycerin or something on this side. Um, so the only place that I ever see it leak is the two halves thread together. If it starts leaking there. You can't even get the spare part for it, you just might as well just get the isolator. You 
you get like this whole ascension for me, like all the way to the union, you know, pop it straight back in. But, you know, that should be three, four, five years down the road kind of thing, not, you know, once a year. Um, so that's the system. Are we oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Did I stop the clock? Yes. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, we're going to do something different later. So I'm just going to slow it down so we can start dosing again. Uh, with bleach, because it gasses, you shouldn't go above 50%. I like to actually be about 75%. So if I turn it down to 75%, before we were at 30% here, and we were at 30 here. So what I did is I turned it up to 75%, and I slowed it down. So now we're only doing 10 strokes per minute. So we're doing less stroke. We're doing more per stroke, less stroke. So I like to be about 75%. I mean, you could go to 100, but then you guys can't run. You guys aren't going to turn it up for here anyway. But 75 is pretty good. Um, like I said, in manual mode, up and down arrows to speed and slow it down. Uh, on this bump, if for some reason gas builds up in the suction line, or uh, I don't know, you run out of uh, Bleach, it'll alarm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that. So I'm just going to allow air into the suction just by undoing this for the time being. Because what will happen is if you dose really slow, gas will build up in your suction line. And what I want to see is I want to see these lines slowly make it up to the pump so the gas can get to the pump. If the gas can get to the pump, it can take care of it. So it'll start making loud, or sort of louder noises when it has gas. Because what it's doing is when it pushes that diaphragm out, it's sort of monitoring how, how hard it is to push it out. Right? And when I'm pushing it against 100 PSI, it's really hard. But when I don't have any liquid to push out, it's really easy to compress that gas. And so it starts making funky, loud knocking sounds, which are fine. And you hear that click? That click is this solenoid opening. So it says, you know what? I just sensed that it was really easy for the diaphragm to go out. So it's trying to reprime itself. So what it does is it's, it's running at full speed. Yeah. In order to you know, pull all that gas out of those and reprime your line. And what you find is it opens up this little quarter inch line and it starts pumping back to the tank. Yeah. Now I've got it set for 40 seconds. So what it's going to do is for 40 seconds, it's just going to pull this in and pump straight back to the tank and try to purge out anything that'll happen. The reason I picked 40 seconds is if you drain this tank down and for some reason it's completely empty, 40 seconds should be pretty close to repriming the whole thing. If it does those reprimes three times in a row, it'll go in hard less and it'll stop. And I'm assuming that your PLC will probably flip to the other one. Most common reason that it does that, you don't have to anything. Um, you know, Maybe, maybe you have sort of like a little bit of an air pocket or like this is loose or like there's a, you know, a break in that suction line and it's just sucking air, sucking air, sucking air. That would be another reason. So it should be able to fix itself. Um, this solenoid, it's not really a maintenance item, but be very delicate with it. Because you're, sport, because you're sporting the, the weight of a diaphragm on the plastic, it's actually a fairly delicate piece. When you, uh, and if you can see right here, the black line, that's the O-ring sealing it. So you're not, you don't need to do it up super tight. So if you're ever going to undo it or do it up, you're only grabbing the white portion of it. Never grab this piece and twist it on. Now, and I, I didn't even realize this until somebody had the problem is, if I undo it a little bit, what happens is it actually starts pumping out this quarter inch line. So you've opened up the bleed valve just that little bit and it starts making a pumping sound. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, just make sure that stuff, you know, just finger tight and you're good to go. Uh, now, 
How many get one of you guys to do all the programming? Who wants to touch the bottom? Sure. Go. So, right now we're in manual mode. But we should be running in analog mode. So, we're going to change it to analog mode. So, hold down P until P is programmed. Hold down P until the screen changes. And then it should say mode, settings. Mode, set, clear, and language. Yeah. So, manual and analog are modes. So, if you press P in uh, one point in mode, it'll give you another menu. And you're only going to go between manual and analog. So, analog at the bottom. Contact and batch you'll never use. It's two different, it's a different type of control. Um, so, we're now in analog mode. Everyone's, he's giving us a weird signal. He's giving us, like, you know, whatever he's not working right now. So, yeah. But you can see that it's running. Yeah, 175 per minute. So, at 75%. So, usually you're running like this, and then it's like, oh, I need to do some maintenance. I want to run the pump just manually. So, we'll go back to manual for the time being. So, Good to go. Now there's a few other settings. Oh, you're not done. <laughs> so if you hold down P, harder. There you go. And go down. Um, well, obviously, language you're never going to change unless you really want to read it in German. Uh, clear. It has counters on this thing. You probably don't care about them, so you probably never ever go into clear. But if you wanted to clear the counters, like the analyzers or whatever, that's you go to clear. So instead, you're going to go to settings. And this is really, you're not really going to change these in the long run, but you might change them in the short run, just depending on you know how the system reacts or in the you know during startup. Uh, so you went into settings. So I always start at the bottom. So you go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, keep going. So system will tell you like what firmware. I'm probably the only time it's going to happen is if, like, if you have problems with that, you go, hey, go down to the system and check it out. But instead, we're going to go to de -assing. Press P. So, uh, so we want airlock. And you can do airlock, period, or both. Or none. We're always going to be in airlock. So what that is, is whenever it senses that it's airlock or gas is getting sucked in and you can't move it out, it's going to, it's going to open up the purge. Periodic is I can set it to go, hey, every 12 hours, just reprime yourself. Uh, and both is it does both. Um, I'm going to tell you a problem with periodic, and that's, well, I don't want to time out just yet. So if we go to airlock, press P, uh, D time is degassing time. So that's how long do, do I run at full speed, repriming myself? I've got to set it 40 seconds. You know, maybe you want it less, maybe you want it more, depending on what happens. So you might change that number. So if you press P once, you get flashing lines around it. Yep. You can use up and down arrows to change it. So if you press P one more time, it'll probably flash around on. Uh, we're not using pause, but it doesn't matter if it's on or off. I haven't figured out why to turn it off yet, so. <laughs> uh, and then you're back at the main screen. Now, we could set these up that, you know, well, that even though the pump, the well pump's not running, you know, and it doesn't run for three days, I want to reprime myself and just make sure it's red. Now, one problem I found is, depending on what happens to your pressure here, it might dose out. Because I'm pushing so much, that if this pressure dropped for some reason, it might actually push it in here, and I've seen spikes. So, that's why I don't need periodic. If I don't need periodic, I'm not going to use it. Some guys need it, that like their pumps are down for like a week on end. And it's like, well, you know what, maybe I should just keep it going, otherwise, you know, gas builds up all over. So um, that's why we're not using periodic, don't worry about it. So we're on airlock. Um, yeah, hold down P one more time. Go to set. Um, and then go to dosing. Low pressure, high pressure. So uh, go down to high pressure, press P. So these pump, these pumps can sense too much pressure on the discharge. And if that happens, what do I want the pump to do? Right now I've got it set to air. So it means the pump will stop and you'll get an alarm out. There's 
if you went to warning, the pump would keep going, and you just get it up, and, and you wouldn't necessarily get it up. So, if there's too much pressure, I definitely won't pump this up. Okay, so that's why it's on air. Now, there's a little trick going back menus. So it's add error. So if you press the up arrow once and then twice, you go back a menu. Uh, low pressure, it can actually sense, uh, sorry, broken discharge line. So it's low pressure on the discharge. The problem is, is with bleach, it doesn't work very well with the gas. So I usually leave it as none. So it's probably, if you go to low, it should be none. So it's off. It works well with other chemicals that don't be gas, but it doesn't work as well with the, the bleach that gas is off. I just find it problematic. So, uh, so go up arrow once, and actually, now we'll go to settings. So, the diaphragm pumps that you've probably seen, what happens is I'm doing 10 strokes a minute. It means I do a stroke and I wait six seconds. And then I do a stroke and I wait six seconds. So what you get is you get a dose and you get nothing for six seconds. You get a dose and nothing for six seconds. So what slow is, is it, and that would be fast. Slow, instead of going dose and waiting six seconds, I'm going to go discharge for six seconds, and then suck. And then discharge for six seconds, and then suck in. So what you get is you get a much more continuous dose going in for the, when, you, when you're running at uh, low strokes. So that's what slow is. It also makes it very quiet. <laughs> uh, so press P once. Uh, you can actually slow down your suction. It's meant for high viscosity. So like if I was like really sucking like something really thick, I could slow down that suction. Uh, it derates the pump, and I don't need it. So that's why it's uh, to normal. So normal, it's just a regular suction stroke. Uh, so press B1 more. Uh, harder. Intelligent and straight. Intelligent means it's looking for the airlocks, the high pressure, the low pressure, all the bits and pieces. If I just did it straight, it just turns it into a dumb pump. So intelligent is good. One more time. Uh, P3 and... Um, so this pump factory is set at P4, okay. which means that that high pressure, um, it means that that pump can do 16 bar or like 250 PSI. And then it's that high pressure would happen at 20% 20, 20 or 50% more than that. So it's like, you know, 300, 350, which is way more than we need. So I've dropped it down to three. Now I was hoping that it would actually go off. So I'm gonna set it at number two. We're gonna see what happens. So change that, so press P1s, change that to a two. Then uh, press P, press P, just sort of, if you have to go all the way through, back to the main screen, or to save any changes. So if you make a change, and you're like, uh, you just let it time out, and we'll save it. So we're now on P3, P2. The compensation, remember what I was saying about the back pressure valve? Constant pressure means that these guys are consistent. To, uh, on top of that, this pump actually senses how much pressure is on the discharge. So far. Yeah. Oh no, actually, well, we're at high pressure. So, um, it actually senses, and it actually doesn't matter what the pressure changed on it, it'll compensate for it. Uh, it's not the same as a centrifugal or like a well pump. I mean, if you put a lot of pressure, the flow will change drastically on a, on a, a well pump, right? Yeah. On these guys, it's sort of like a you know, 5 to 10% thing. But, uh, you know, there's no reason to have it all. So those settings, you really, well, other than that P, we might not change, we're gonna see. Um, you're not really, it's between that P and that degassing for 40 seconds. Those are literally the only two items that you're gonna change. Okay? So, um, well, it makes sense that we have a P plus alarm because we're going to be isolated. So, I'm gonna open up this guy, and our pressure gauge should draw. And then to clear that alarm, Press P. Sometimes hard. There you go. And we're gonna see what happens. Now should I speed it up a little bit just to make it happen a little bit faster? Five zeros. Yeah. Maybe go to like yeah, sixty or something like that. We'll see. What well, we're already at hundred, so we're gonna see. Actually, what we can do is we can go ahead and so it doesn't work your system. We'll run that. I just want to run it for a little while and see if it actually alarms at regular pressure. And if it does, then we have to go back to P3. 
But the nice thing about it is that when this is set at about 145, and 100 is about the cusp. Uh, it can be problematic at 100. A little bit low at number two would be really good. But what's nice is when I close this valve at 150 PSI, I get, it goes through here, it goes through here, it goes through here, and then I get an alarm, which is perfect because, you know, I'm not overpressurizing the system, but I know that I'm not going out here, I'm going out here. Because I'm going to get an alarm, it's like, hey, what's going on? And you're going to see a P plus, and you're going to be like, okay. And it's just, you know, oh, you know, this valve was closed, or maybe this guy's plugged up, and stuff like that. Um, that's pretty much it. But I'm going to grab, I think you guys have spare parts. A couple of this is your bag of goodies. Manuals suck. Quick starts don't. So, almost everything you need to know in general about the pump is going to be like a quick start. Depends in color, it's beautiful. Uh, but here's all the things that will happen on the screen. Most of them you'll never see. But you might see like your P, plus, right? And you might see your level. Uh, you don't have a monitor. You know, if you have a you don't have a diaphragm rupture, but like if you see something on the screen, it'll be here, and at least it'll give you an idea of what's going on. Um, we're going to go through a calibration concentration, don't worry about uh, auxiliary flow monitoring, uh, you don't have to worry about quick priming. So instead of speeding it up, at any time, if you want the pump to run really fast, press both buttons at the same time and it'll go as fast as it can. As soon as you let go, it'll go back to what it was doing. So even if you're in analog mode and like, uh, you know, you just wanted to reprocess this really quick, you press both arrows at the same time, it'll pump really fast. Um, you're going between these two. The analog signal, you shouldn't ever have to play with because it should be set and then you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna speed up and slow the pump really from over there. Manual mode is just, you know, if if I wanted, you know, change the speed and run it, you know, manually for a little while, that's what you would do. Uh, contact, don't worry about. It. It's a different, it's basically analog. But at least it's going to come up here. Oh, uh, yeah. But good call. This is good, actually, this operating this way. So, actually, what we can do is let's uh, slow it down to 10. Go off this way, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's a quick start. Keep one handy. You have a second one in here as well. Uh, seems somebody's taking somebody's taking your spare parts. Get a part. This was your system spare parts kit. <laughs> uh, so you got a bunch of O-rings and a bunch of O-rings. Those O-rings are for these and these. Okay. But I have never actually seen a Kenline valve leak if the O-ring was put in properly. Then you have two diaphragm kits. So you can see in it. It has a few parts in it. It's for these, the back pressure and the, the pressure relief. You're probably not going to need the spring. And you're probably not going to need the white piece. The only piece that you really need is that is the diaphragm. Blue side is the chemical side. It's the Teflon side. So that's the one that's going to go down when you're looking 
is going to fit. The blue side is going to face the board. And you'll see it when it comes out. And you see how flat, how perfect it is. When you take this guy out, you'll have a bunch of lines pinched into it. That uh, and that's the reason why you have to replace it. So um, that's the system spare parts kit. You also have a spare parts kit for the pumps, which you see I have to put that together because um, it's in pieces right now. But and I gotta find that check valve I went after. Diaphragm. It actually doesn't get pinch lines uh, sealed into it, so you can actually take the head off and put it back on. So it looks slightly different. One trick about taking a diaphragm off, what that one is. You gotta... Because it just threads on. So there's a shaft and there's a thread on the back of it. Right? But what happens is um, there's a solenoid in it and it can spin inside the pump. So you need to somehow hold that solenoid not allowed to spin when you take this off. The other nice thing is, if this is at 100%, this is sucked right in, and you won't be able to pull it off. So when you want to take a diaphragm off, turn it to 0%. What that'll do is it'll push the diaphragm out, and it'll lock the this, this solenoid, so that this guy can just hand, hand on thread. And then when you go back on, just thread it until it stops, then just you know give it a little bit of tweak, and you're good to go. But make sure you turn 100% uh, uh, 0%. When you're going to do it, you know, read the manual and it says right there. <laughs> like, just like everybody does, right? Um, and then you also get a, um, this is a discharge valve. So there's an arrow on it. And this side always goes out of the pump. So this one's going to go in on the side, or on the discharge. And the other one's going to go, you'll have a, suction one as well. Now, the two things, make sure when you take dive, or check valve out, take all the seals out with it, because some of them with, will stay. And even half of it, in these pumps especially, half the valve will use for the puff and stay in. Quite often, on these valves, half of the valve will stay in the head. So when I unthread this, that piece will stay in the head. So you gotta pull this piece out. And there'll even be a little white one in there. Take that one out as well. And then replace everything. You should be hand tight, but you know, an eighth quarter of a turn might be required to just completely seal the Teflon seal. Because the Teflon is a little bit harder, so yeah. you have to sometimes tweak it a little bit. But no more than that, because they actually bumped the seal. If you go too far, something's going to split. Um, yeah. The only other piece. This pump comes with white seals. Between here and here. I hate white seals. They're Teflon, they're hard, and they don't seal super well. They pinch lines in it, and it's like, fair enough. They also come with two other seals. Number one seal that I would use is Viton. Number two, so on this it actually tells you what they are. Isn't that convenient? The white one's PTFE, doesn't seal as well. So the first seal I'd use is Viton. And it's the one with the green side on it. Okay? Number two seal I would use is EPDM. Looks very similar, but doesn't have the green side on. This one will, it'll last, but it'll slowly degrade. So you might get, like when you take it apart, you might get a little bit of black residual off of it, but it still seals it a lot better. And then, you know, worst case scenario, use the white seal. The white seals are one time use only because you finish those lines in it. So as soon as you take it apart, you should replace them. And there's a little thing here, so it's green bark on the side. So at the moment, I've got bites on, bites on, bites on, bites on, all the way around. Um, yeah, so the only thing I think we should do, we should do a calibration, and then we'll be done. And the strap in my truck, the strap in my truck.
Uh, so, in order to do calibration, instead of going out this way, we're going to go into this. And I always want to do a calibration approximately at uh, the way you operate the pumps. But it's a whole lot easier to do it in manual mode. Okay? So, first thing we got to do is get it running at pretty much system operation, which is perfect. We already are, right? We're going out here, we're going through our back pressure valve. So, what I'm going to do. Instead of going out here, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to wait for it to fill up a little bit so I can get it on a line that I can read. I don't care which one it is. The easiest one is probably zero, but and then I'm going to stop. I'm actually going to speed it up just because the calibration will take a really long time at 10 strokes a minute. Oh, close this up, yeah. So I'm going to fill up the calibration column a little bit. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it at 60 strokes a minute, stroke a minute, or a short second, and just it'll operate a little bit faster. You don't need to do this very often, if ever. It actually probably doesn't make too much difference to you because um, you're not actually worried about how much chlorine you put in the water because you're gonna measure how much is in the water after the fact. So the difference of you putting in one liter an hour or two liters an hour makes really no difference to you because you're actually measuring after the fact. You know, so you're gonna have to you're gonna put in what you need to put in. But the nice thing with calibration is is you know if the pump is doing something properly. So it's filling up. I'm just gonna stop it. I'm gonna let the, the last little residual bit drip down. And I'm gonna say about nine milliliters. Okay. So uh, I'll get you to this. So now we go into the menus. So hold down P. So we're going to go to set, and this menu says calibration. Press P, then you go to start, and then as soon as you press P, the pump's going to start running. Okay? So we let it run. It's going to start filling up our calibration. And all it's doing is counting strokes. And at the end, when I press P again, not yet, <laughs> not yet, uh, it's going to ask, how much did I just pump? So we were at 9 milliliters. The longer you do a calibration for, the more accurate it's going to be. So, you know, I'm going to fill it up almost to the, almost to the top. They say about a minute is good. Yeah, I got it at 60 strokes a minute, so six strokes a second, yeah. Going below. I don't know. With this pump, going below 10 strokes a minute, you're starting to ask for a little bit of slug. Anything above that is probably really good. Most metering pumps, I like to be at about 30 strokes a minute or higher. You know, stroke every two seconds. So stroke, stroke, you know, every two seconds. So it's pretty consistent. Once you start going past 30 seconds, there's big, there's quite big gaps between them. With this one stroking slow, we can go a lot slower. Um, and a lot less strokes a minute, and it doesn't make a difference. So you're near your 90. <coughs> so anytime you want to press P, go for it. Just press once. And so it's saying, how much did I just pump? So we pump from nine, nine up to, what is that, uh, 85, 86. So 86 minus nine is 77. 77. So, oh, uh, so I want to put in 77 mils. So we're at, it actually thought that it did 71. It was pretty close. 77, press P. And now, if you press I once, it tells you how many liters an hour you're doing. And if you press I one more time, that's how many strokes an hour you're doing. And if you press I again, it'll say 60 strokes a minute. So it depends on if you want strokes per minute or if you want liters per hour, depending on what you want to record. Um, now, one other thing that we can do 
<clears throat> it's not too strong yet, it's been sitting right now, is if you hold down the I button, the little arrow's going to come down the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, release it, and then start pressing it again. And you get a second screen. So I can have strokes per minute here, or, or liters per hour here, and I can have whatever else I want here. So that's a counter. Um, so it times out. So you got to do it again if you want to get back down to the bottom. Uh, you got to wait for the eye to disappear. Wait for the eye to disappear. It's frustrating the first time you, you do it. Yep. So that's you know how many liters is pumped. That's this knob. Uh, it tells you some settings inside it. You know strokes per hour, strokes per minute, and liters per hour, and then. So whichever one makes sense to you, you know. Um, I like usually the percent because I hate this dial right here. I much prefer going by the digital. So I usually leave it on percent. But pressing the I button as many times as you want won't ever do anything to the pump. It's just information. So this guy's calibrated. Uh, I'll calibrate this unless you want to do it again. So we want to stop this one and go to that one. So stop that pump. I actually was stopped. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apparently we stopped it. And then this one actually isn't primed, so it should reprime itself. Drain this out. <laughs> there we go. There. You can see it purge out, purge out a lot of air, and it'll reprime it really, really fast. Whereas, like the old style pumps, they'd only they'd only reprime as fast as they were pumping. So if you're pumping at sort of like you know ten strokes a minute, it's only going to reprime itself at ten strokes a minute. No more dog. Uh, maybe run it at sixty strokes a minute. Harder. Oh. We're in analog mode. So we gotta change the to, to manual mode. Nope, go to mode. So go up arrow once. And then yeah, go to mode. Yeah. And put manual, yeah. And then let's go at 60 strokes a minute, just like last time. I mean, it doesn't actually matter what you do with calibration. You can do it at one stroke a minute. It's just going to take forever to do your calibration, right? So, um, so make sure that your pressure is up where it's supposed to be, which is perfect, uh, and then you can stop it at any time. So then I let a little bit of trickle just sort of finish, and you know, get your number. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, nope. You want to go to calibration. Uh, set, yeah. Go down to calibration. And start, yeah. And as soon as you press that button, it's going to start again. Times, man. This is my life right here. <laughs> It'd be better if instead of playing a ticking, you play a song or something. Yeah. Well, it used to be that you, they were they were loud thumping, right? Yeah. Just thump, thump, and you'd be in this oh, the, basement, you know, yeah, just, just going nuts in this room. At least now, when they actually operate, they're really, really quiet. Yeah. Nice. Although a lot of guys used to use that sound to know if it was actually operating or not. <laughs> hey, that's good. Not even open the door. Just put your ear to the yeah, door. And... Yeah. Hey, that's good. No problem. Uh, do you know what that people with liquid? 
ish. Yeah. I heard the bump running. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pita stop. stop. So it, it doesn't really matter when you, like I said, the longer you do it, the better, the better, the, the more accurate you're going to be. So. Trying to go back to ninety again. We did the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. No two pumps will be identical. So, but that last one will come in. 87 minus 14. 73. Yep, 73. What does it say? 64. Yep, so. 73. That's P. And you're good to go. go. So, uh, what we should do is put it back, one of the pumps back to where we we're at. So it was at 10 strokes a minute and 75% stroke length in manual. Yeah. That'll take a second. I mean, 74, 75, 76, personally, are the same for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're going to see a true difference there. And then start the pump, uh, and then make sure that the liquid is going where you want it to go. So the one thing I'm going to do is, because it looks like it's going to work, is I'm going to set them both at pressure setting too. Now, in the okay. short term, if you guys, you know, intermittently or, or randomly see that P plus come up and like, you know, nothing really is showing, uh, we might have to go to P3. But I'd rather put it at P2 because when I start going through the pressure relief, it gives me a P plus a lot. If I go to P3, that won't happen. It'll go through the pressure relief, but it won't necessarily get an alarm. So what you'll see is you'll see low chlorine rather than an alarm for the pump telling you that's not good. So I'm going to set it at P2 for the time being, but there is a chance that it, you might get, uh, what's the word, uh, nuisance P plus alarms in the short term. If you okay. do get that, switch. you know, either call me and we can go through it, or switch it from a 2 to a 3. Uh, it was in dosing. Uh, settings, yeah. And then they should be all the same, so slow, uh, pre, yeah, normal, yeah, uh, intelligent, yeah. And then if you press one more time, you get the flashing lines, turns up to the two. Compensation on. Yeah. Back to 10. And in general, it should just work like this. You shouldn't really have to touch it. Um, you know, over time, like, you know, uh, what happens is the O-rings compress, yeah. so you might get a little bit of crystallization happening here. Best thing you can do is rather than just straight tighten it, take it off, take a wet rag, wipe it down, then do it back up again. But sooner or later, you're going to compress that O-ring so flat that you're going to be basically taking a PVC face against a PVC face, and if you can't... You know, you shouldn't have to take a pair of pliers and crank this down. If you can't seal it with your hand, change the O-ring. You should have a few spare O-rings in here for, for in here and in here. If not, I'm sure we can find some O-rings kicking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're readily available everywhere. Plus the mark, you know. So, I kind of was about to do it, and the other one won't. So, I'm going to change this guy back there. I knew that we were very close. Uh, keep them both the same? Yeah. Okay, 
it's just more than Peggy said about the media arms. Well, <laughs> even still, if you get a, you might get a P plus. I mean, and in that case, you know, this isn't relieving at a low enough pressure. Okay. Um, and to check that, you're just going to close it and get head to pump and just see what see what happens. See if you going. start going above 160, you know, open your valve back up, and you've got a plug somewhere, Something probably in here. Most likely there. So press I on this guy. The nice thing is that if you slow it down, it'll change flow rate, right? Uh, so what was reading 10? But I'm guessing that they're going to be slightly off from each other. Yeah, they're pretty good. So this guy actually does pump a little bit more, but not significantly. So the flipping between the two should be pretty much the same. Although, we should check. And this is how I actually make the two pumps go the same. If I go over to percent. So this one's at 79, this one's at 75, right? So if I go to 75 on this guy, actually, I mean, I shouldn't leave it at 79. It'll actually go down. So I need this guy running at 79 and this guy at 75 to be about the same. More like 80. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at a, about a 5% between the two. I mean, it could be just the way that they're plumbed or the extra suction line or just that much difference. And I mean, 5% in here, we're talking like, you know, maybe a quarter of a mil a stroke, you know? So, you should sleep right in the middle. Perfect. Um, yeah, so we're good to go. Um, have you got any questions? Go right there. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll give you guys uh, my card, and it has my cell number. I can pretty much walk you through everything here, by you know, while I'm driving. <laughs> so uh, I know the thing off by heart. Uh, yeah. Um, if you're having problems and you don't know what the part is that you need, I'm the best person to talk. If you know what you know which part you need. Then you can just call my office and you can get the parts to give you the part. And like I said, the most common pieces are going to be like the diaphragm and then the spare parts get for here. But you've already called them for that. Call us if you have to replace your spares if you're going to use them. Prominent if you read the manual. I can't believe you're recording this. Yeah, shut the video off, please. Uh, the manual says you should do it once a year. Now, that's based on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, every day, every day of the year, running at full speed, full, full pressure, right? That puts a lot of wear on things. Yeah. You're running, you know, a quarter of that, if that. Um, so pretty much what I usually tell with, you know, this kind of system is if you're doing maintenance on one of the pumps every year, you're doing really good maintenance, which means that you're doing maintenance on the pump every two years. I've seen these pumps run for 10 years and not stop the touch. But if you want to do good maintenance, I would say probably somewhere between around two years. You know, because you're flip because the way that this thing operates is well, well turns on, this guy runs. Well turns off, well turns off, this guy runs. So they're alternating on on, on, well, on the pump to start up. So um, sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't, because if I have equal time on both pumps, what happens? One breaks, the other one breaks. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I don't like just running one because this guy will just get crystallized and never used. And as soon as you need it, it's not going to work. I'm kind of a fan of running one most of the time and then running this guy for like once. Yeah. Or like you guys come in here, just run it for like 10 minutes, move the liquid through, and then just go back to the other one. So that way you're not putting the wear on them. But at least you're moving that liquid through, so it's not getting crystallized and stuff. So, I mean, every everybody has a different you know, theory on. Them. So. Um, yeah. This valve is probably your biggest problem. Not that it's a problem valve, but it's the one that sees the wear. It's probably the one that if you're not moving the liquid and you have real issues, it's your discharge valve. Even if you can't prime, quite often the discharge. So. 
like I said, it's if this isn't tight, you're not going to pry. And then otherwise, it's the check valves of the problem, not the diaphragm. But you know, if you're going to do your annual maintenance, do it all. Do it all the diaphragm, and then you know that you're good to go. My screwdriver. Um, if you're taking the whole pump out, there's actually a screw holding this on. There's a screw under here. There's supposed to be the screw under there. In here? Yeah. 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 You take that out, you undo that, unthread this. This can unthread off, this can unthread off. They only go in one hole. This guy has a screw in it and then just pulls off. This is your power cable. I would not suggest disconnecting it here. Unplug it and pull it. Because if you pull it out right here, it could be live. It could be live contact. So. And then usually the other is. It's like, how is that going to go down? I don't get it. I just find that it's just supposed to stay up. But half the time, you know, we're going to do it. You're good to go. Uh, and then you'll have to go through the control of it, but really what's going to happen is we're going to send an analog signal here. And then you're going to have like a little like sort of um, uh, gain. So, you know, you'll be running, the gain will be at 100. And you're like, well, I'm at 0.8% or 0.8 residual and I actually want 0.9. You just turn that up a little bit and it'll speed up the pump, pace with the flow. So in general, like normal operation, you shouldn't ever be touching these pumps. Like control ones, so, but you'll go through it a little bit better when uh, when you get some fixed. So, there you go.